And I'm, and you know, I tried exercise more and eat less. Everybody knows that, but that doesn't work. And the reason is, all right, here we are. Um, so uh, in the live video that I did last Friday, which maybe I'll link at the end of this video, somebody kept mentioning this Peter Rogers, MD. And so I decided it's Valentine's Day. I unfortunately have nothing better to do. So let's watch this. Um, Let's see where we go. I found, I was watching this video. I feel like that might be too boring for this video. So let's, let's watch some of this. Okay, hi, we're this, gonna, okay, we're gonna talk about. Some of this, see what happens here. I have no idea. It typically no idea has about 200 to 500 about. milligrams a day of sodium. I don't ever count. I just don't add any salt to my food and I don't eat any processed food, zero, none, not a processed food. Um, when you eat that way, that's probably about like what our ancestors ate. Persons who eat this way essentially almost never have hypertension, virtually never. It's so rare, it's not even funny. Uh, but I thought everybody ate meat, our ancestors. I thought that's all they ate. Lived in a cave, murdered animals, ate ribs. Um, what and when people I talk about all I say low time. salt, I mean low sodium and chloride. So there's a big advantage of low sodium because sodium is a vasoconstrictor, predisposes to hypertension, inhibits uh, secretion of endothelial nitric oxide, vasoconstriction drives up blood pressure, of course, low chloride, so sodium chloride. Yeah, caffeine is also, uh, he calls it vasoconstrictor, or vaso, whatever. Uh, and a lot of people drink coffee, so not only are they having way too much salt and constricting their blood flow, they are also having caffeine. Real good, uh, you know, combination. Chloride. Chloride is not good for you either. I mean, it's a halogen. Halogens in, in general are not the greatest things, but what's unique about chloride is it's an anion, negatively charged ion in your blood. It'll displace your bicarbonate ions, and thus a high sodium chloride diet will induce a low-grade metabolic acidosis because of the displacement of the chloride anions, which are part of your acid buffer. Okay, the next thing about 100% plant-based diet. When I say plant-based, I mean low-fat plants. I do not eat avocados or seeds ever. I'll eat nuts occasionally, about once every couple of months. I'll sometimes have some Brazil nuts because I got a lot of selenium in it. Man, Brazil nuts, boy. I don't buy them. They're like $40 a pound now, but... That's about the only that and macadamia nuts, man. Those two, I, I just if I had them around, I mean, I would be eating them all the time. But I get adequate selenium from my other foods. I don't really even need to do that. But I do that maybe once every four months is what I do in reality. I wrote once. A I mean, I was driving way far out of my way to get really good ones when I lived in Philly. Oh man, there was a there's a Whole Foods. If anybody's from Philly or Pennsylvania or Jersey for that matter, um. There's this place called, uh, what is it, Plymouth Meeting? I think there's one in King of Prussia. But there's there's a Whole Foods in Plymouth Meeting. And, man, that, that, that Whole Foods is stocked, boy. And I used to go there all the time. A month here, actually, I do it less often. Um, you want low fat. What I've noticed is, you know, stupid people get brainwashed by a slogan very easily. They hear, good fats, I want good fats. There's no such thing as good fats. Just to let you know, there's no such thing as good fats. Any type of fat you would ingest will have detrimental effects on blood flow and increase the risk of atherosclerosis. And the so-called healthy fats, omega-3s, there's problems with those too. It's not that easy to purify omega-3 fats from fish oil. Omega-3 fats, they're a PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acid. They're highly predisposed to lipid peroxidation because between those uh, unlike usual, I am going to link his videos because he actually has less subs hum, somehow than me, even after being at Chef AJ. Um, he, he's just too much truth bombs, I think. Double bonds, let's say on the six and the three carbon, the six and the nine carbon, they're, they have what's called a methylene bridge. The carbon in between them has only a weak pull on its hydrogen, and it's very prone to being uh, oxidized and leading to free radical formation. If you look at it, for example, when you buy omega-3 fats in a store, it'll be in an opaque container because sunlight can uh, cause oxidation of it, and they'll want you to store it in a fridge. It's very hard to not have those go rancid. There's often contaminants in them. 
omega. I mean, any any fat, especially flax meal. Why do people buy flax meal? That stuff is going to be oxidized so fast. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you see people buying this stuff. I'm like, oof. Threes are now associated with increased risk of prostate carcinoma. There's some other uh, world-class nutrition experts who believe that they cause significant immune suppression, which can decrease the ability to contain metastatic disease for some cancers. So, bottom line, I don't recommend them. Um, I don't think there's any such thing as good fat. And then you're gonna hear, oh, olive oil. Olive oil has the best advertising of probably any product in the world. 100%, boy, 100%. I had somebody come in like every single one of my videos and say, you just need it like a liter of EVOO. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. I'm actually going to be making a, a video about that soon. World, you know, they call it extra virgin olive oil. Like you want to have romance with it. It's liquid fat. All oils are liquid fat. They're all bad for blood flow. And that's been shown by the brachial artery ultrasound. I mean, Pritikin showed this back in, what was he, he his heyday was like this like 70s and 80s that's a long time ago i'm around from the 80s right uh, just nobody seems to learn on tests that they that they impair the ability of the artery to vasodilate okay what else um the lower the fat in your diet the less likely people are to be fat people who eat these oh, really geez. low fat diets based on potatoes based on rice for example they're almost always skinny the body mass index of a, a health vegan it's very low. I mean, I don't know for sure what it is. I would guess it's in the ballpark of about 22 with a modern meat eater, junk food eater, standard American diet, SAD diet, SAD. It's in the ballpark of at least around 30, you know, depending on the age of the patients. Um, they get fatter as they get older. Um, I forget what mine is. I still mm, don't do keto is all I'll say. Should be 100% organic. The reason I say 100% organic, and by the way, you're going to see some world famous nutrition doctors who say, oh, organic doesn't matter. I disagree with them because I've been studying a lot about the herbicides and pesticides associated with non organic food, and they're bad. There's a lot of serious side effects. There's books written about the side effects of those. I've read those books, and I can tell you, if you have the ability to eat 100% organic, you want to eat 100% organic. Some people say, oh, organic's BS, they don't necessarily follow the rules, and it's true that sometimes maybe they don't, but multiple research studies have been done where they- You can also find, well, I guess it's technically still organic, but you can find, especially locally, especially if you live in a city like I do, like, you know, like yeah, I'm smack dab in the middle of the city, but if I go like 30 miles in any direction other than north, I'd be in the lake. But in any other direction, so, uh, you know, any other direction, 30 miles, I'm going to be in an area where I can find farms, right? And uh, most farms will sell to you. They usually have farm stands. You can go talk to these people. Like, I like to go east um, because I'm an east sider. So, like, that's comfortable for me. But... I go to the east side and um, I find these farms out. In, well, I'm not going to say uh, where, but on the east side, I'll just say. And I'm like, you know, do you use, you know, all these uh, fungicides and everything like that? And most of, the, most of the time, I actually have never had anybody say yes, other than corn. Um, but for potatoes, it was the purpose I was like, caring about. I really didn't care about the rest. They don't really seem to use it for cabbage, and stuff like that. But um, they say that they just they don't they don't do it because they can't afford it anyway. So it's organic by default. It's kind of like Oreos are uh, vegan by default. But you can find this stuff cheaper. And these people are selling potatoes for fifty cents a pound. Checked the blood, the urine, hair, fingernails, all the stuff for uh, residues of pesticides and herbicides, and they found they're much higher in people who do not eat organic. So. 100% organic. And by the way, in terms of liquids, what do I drink? I only... You know, I, organic though with fruit, man, that is really, other, other than bananas, that is really EA hard to find. I just said EA sports, right? <laughs> um, it's hard to find. And when you do find it, like I can find organic uh, oranges up the street here. It's like 
two fifty three dollars a pound. I mean, it's like two two oranges. Only drink I don't know. reverse osmosis filtered water. That's it. I would never drink tap water. There's too reverse osmosis is the way to go. Is the way to go. Last Sunday, not two days ago, not the Super Bowl thing. Last Sunday, I'm like, I was here all day. I'm like, I'm not, I was checked out. I was, I'm actually pretty checked out today too, but I think it's the lack of, uh, but, um, I went to Whole, Whole Foods and I'm like, you know what? I haven't been here in a long time, long time. Uh, I used to go weekly and I'm like, I'm going to bring, I have a five gallon, uh, you know, uh, tub. Unfortunately, yeah, it's plastic. Um, and I'm going to fill it with uh, reverse osmosis. I mean, I have only been drinking. I, I, it, it's gone now. I need to get it refilled or figure out how to get it here. Um, I've only been drinking like a gallon at most a day, if not, if not less. And, and I've been urinating clearer, which it was taking me like five gallons, even of that 10 stage filter to do. Too many um, chemicals in tap water. I would never drink it. If I had to, I would be willing to drink uh, carbon filtered tap water, but I would never. Yeah, I have a 10 stage carbon filter. It's different stages of carbon. What can you do? Never do so willingly. I would always have reverse osmosis. I don't drink too much water either. I don't think you need this eight cups a day. I think that's all nonsense and advertising. I mean, I, I got to agree with him after uh, adding a reverse osmosis back into my life. I have a gallon container in my car that I just finished yesterday and I filled it last two like nine days ago, nine days. And I, I have not been dehydrated, but I finally ran out of everything. So I'm gonna have to figure out getting that today. Um, I get my water mostly through the plant foods that I eat, or let's say mixed with oatmeal, for example. Um, what's the main food to eat in a plant-based diet of this type? Starch. Most of your calories should come from starch. What is starch? Starch is basically a polymer of glucose. Um, and it's also gonna have cellulose in it, that's fiber. Because a plant cell, by definition, supports its uh, plasma cell membrane, stabilizes it, rigidifies it with cellulose, which is the fiber that your good gut bacteria need to eat. That's how they maintain your intestinal lining, your enterocytes for your enteric tract. Colonocytes, you could call them for the colon. And those prevent you from having leaky gut and all the problems associated with that, like inflammation and autoimmune disease. Um, the other thing is they satisfy hunger. That's because they're low caloric density. Early satisfaction of hunger is by stretching the stomach. And so they provide early satiety. Satiety is to satisfy hunger. Then when the starch goes into the small bowel, the small intestine has to peel off that fiber to separate it away from the glucose before the glucose is absorbed from the small intestine into the blood. So you get a slow increase in blood glucose in your blood and it stays normal a prolonged amount of time. You feel good when your blood glucose level is normal. So you get prolonged satisfaction of hunger with the fewest possible calories. And that's why starch eaters are skinny. The more fat you eat, the fatter you eat. Unless they're me. I think Durian Ryder has accused me of eating KFC. He's obsessed with KFC. There's not actually that many KFCs even here. Um, so there must be more in Australia. I'm actually gonna probably do a video about that you will be. The more protein you eat, the higher your risk of cancer, the higher your risk um, of kidney failure. Okay, what are some examples of starch eating populations? The Okinawans are super famous as one of the most long-lived populations in the whole world. They've been studied in multiple. You know, they were my gateway drug basically into vegan. Now, I didn't pay attention to it. It took me another four years. And unfortunately, had I done it when I was reading the book, The Okinawa Diet, which I have I did, oh, it's it's right there, actually. I'm, I'm not going to show it. I mean, it's a book. Um, if I had done this, because I was only like 245 at that time. I had 160 pounds to go till I was at my max. Um, I would have been uh, doing amazing. Context. Just They've been studied by Dan Buettner with his National back, Geographic Blue Zone research showing they're one of the five healthiest populations in the world with the highest percent number of persons in their 90s and 100s that were still physically fit and mentally sharp. There's an American physician named Wilcox, went over there with his brother, another Wilcox who was a PhD, and they were working with some Japanese physicians to study the Okinawan centenarians, persons 100 years of age and older. And they found that a significant number of these centenarian plus population had nothing wrong with them. 
You couldn't find a medical problem on them. People over 100 years of age. A lot of Americans that make it into their 90s or 100s quite often are just sort of like survivors with a lot. Yeah, they're in living cemeteries, which they're putting everywhere. They're knocking down all these trees to put up living cemeteries. Like, it's so ridiculous. They got all these people living in these living cemeteries when they should just be in the cemetery because they're only being held together by by, you know, chemicals from certain places. A lot of comorbidities, a lot of other disease. Uh, these Okinawans were over 100, doing push-ups, still working, incredible. Okay, China, we talked about China before, eating before 1975, 80 to 90% rice and nobody was fat, hardly any diabetes, hypertension, any of that stuff. In Ireland, for many, many decades, these manual laborers would eat 10 pounds of potatoes a day. And they could also supplement that with some beer or with some water or milk. But the main point was you can get everything you want from potatoes. They'll grow underground. They'll be nutritionally complete. And people have been put in metabolic wars and only eaten potatoes for months and been totally fine. Potato is considered by some of the greatest nutrition doctors in the world, like Dr. McDougall, for example. He might be the best nutrition doctor in the world. And he says he thinks potatoes are probably the best food in the world. That's what they're sending up to Mars. I mean, they're not sending cows up there, you know, a little baby, uh, you know, like in a fetus tube, you know, like they're not sending uh, cows up there. They're sending potatoes. So food for thought, literally. I actually only watched this far because I saw Ireland there, Ireland representing. Um, I wanted to get to some of the other ones. Um, I'm going to link this below because I think he's got a lot of good information. But um I'm technically on the clock right now, so I'm going to have to get back to it at some point. I have a series on nutrition heroes. This is our first nutrition hero. We're going to talk about Walter Kempner, MD. Walter Kempner trained in Germany with Otto Warburg, the famous Nobel Prize winning biochemist who discovered the Warburg effect, whereby he was studying how mitochondria are dysfunctional in cancer, um, especially with... That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I can see that. The context of hypoxia and how the cancer cell tends to rely primarily on glycolysis for metabolism rather than going through electron transport in the mitochondria where you can produce a lot more ATP. He had to flee Germany in the 1930s due to the problems there. He came to America and worked in North Carolina at Duke Hospital. And he had made the observation that populations like in Asia that ate a rice-based diet, they were eating at that time 80 to 90% rice, they were very healthy, very thin, um, very low incidence of coronary artery disease or um, hypertension or diabetes. So he had a patient out in North Carolina, a fat lady, and he just recommended a rice diet for her and she did remarkably well, lost a lot of weight and became healthier. So he started to put more and more patients on a rice diet. And he was just using white rice. And um, he did a good job of documenting his patient. It was a pretty good biography. You can buy it. It was written by a lady doctor. Yeah, I have that book. I've shown it in a couple of videos. It's, it's really good. Blue cover, rice diet. That's all it's called. At the moment, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but a lady doctor who worked with him. Her biography is good. A little bit too much. Way too much blabber. It really is. It really is. And it's not going to give you the formula as to what he was doing at all. So if you're going to buy it for that, don't. Chip gossipy stuff. I wish there was more about the medical, but there's pretty good coverage of the medical. Anyways, um, he did a pretty good job of documenting his patients. He followed over 19,000 patients. His rice diet in North Carolina was super famous. Celebrities would fly in from all over the place to be treated by him. It was a very low sodium diet, approximately 150 to 200 milligrams per day. That is super low sodium because sometimes you're going to hear people say, oh, look. that's way too low to do on your own. So if you're seeing this video and you're like, oh, I'm going to try that. Mm -mm, don't do it, man. Way too low to try on your own because you could really run into a lot of problems. Low sodium diet, 2000 milligrams or less. No, no, no. 2000 milligrams is 10 times higher than what his patients were eating. Also, the Yanomamo population in South America, Amazon jungle, they're only eating about 200 milligrams a day of sodium. And you know what their incidence of hypertension is? But they're used to it, right? You, I mean, if somebody's going to go from 
however many milligrams to grams that they're eating of salt in, in a day, and then all of a sudden 150 to 200, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. That's just in me. their seven. I'm just putting that out there, I guess. It's approximately zero. It's so low, it's not even funny. In America, people consider it normal aging to be hypertensive. Well, if you keep your sodium in this low range, uh, you got a good chance to not ever develop hypertension in your life. Um, Which is interesting because I think the Asians tend to eat about 10 grams of this stuff a day. And I don't have what any else of did it. he feed the patients? He fed them primarily white rice, and he would rinse it in water to get all the sodium off. He wanted sodium to be as low as possible. Sodium is a problem. Sodium is a vasoconstrictor. It inhibits endothelial nitric oxide. And when arteries vasoconstrict, that's like pumping you know, the blood through a narrow diameter system. The blood pressure has to come up. Yeah, it's like when in a nitric oxide uh, supplements were coming on to the scene back in, it was either late 90s or the early 2000s. I think it was actually the early 2000s. NO2 was the first one that really came out. What was his name? Like Ed, Ed Bird, I think. I don't know. I forget what his name was. But um, that stuff was expensive as hell, too. And it was cheap. I mean, all you do had to do was buy uh, some beets and a, a, and a juicer. And he would have had the same formula. But he also had some uh, vasodilator in there, like a niacin flush type thing. Um, plant foods in general are very good for blood pressure because plant foods are high in potassium. Potassium is a vasodilator. It opens up arteries. So... Pressure can come. That's money. That might have been what he had in there. I don't know. But he had, I know, I'm almost positive he did have niacin in there, but maybe it was just for the flush effect. I don't know. Down because all the tubes, all the pipes, all the arteries are open. Um, in addition to feeding them white rice, he also let the patients eat a pretty good amount of fruits. And I think what most of us notice, so I'm going to move on. Again, I'm going to link all these videos down below. How to lose weight fast. This is like the most common question people ask me. Um, and, and by the way, just so you know, I went through a fat phase myself. In my mid-30s, I got fat. I never thought I was going to be fat. I was really athletic when I was young. I was student athlete of the year at Stanford University. And I always considered myself, you know, top 1% of fitness. All of a sudden, in my mid-30s, I got really fat, 50 pounds or more overweight, I was weighing 220 pounds. And I'm like, how did that happen? How could this happen to me? It's not, it maybe happens to other people, it shouldn't happen to me. And what happened was I was trying to do hell? two fellowships at once. I Wait, so he's talking about a carbon filter water is a, a estrogenic? Damn, I was just talking about that earlier. I wasn't sleeping. And some of this I can see already that I'm not gonna agree with because I lost 145 pounds on fruit and liquid fruc fructose, so I don't know if I would agree with that. I know I don't. Been enough. We just had a baby at home, my wife and myself, and so I was sleep deprived, and I compensated by drinking like seven cups of coffee at that time, kind of a crazy Damn. lifestyle, but I didn't realize it, sort of in my mid, early to mid-30s. I don't even think I've had coffee this, this century. No, I had it once. Anyway, so then I tried to lose the weight for about uh, three years and I couldn't do it. And I'm like, what, how could this happen? I've got as good a willpower as it gets. And I'm, and you know, I tried exercise more and eat less. Everybody knows that, but that doesn't work. And the reason is your brain's like oh. a thermostat, like a set point. That I guarantee, if you're watching this video, that is gonna be the first part of this video. I get so tired of hearing about that. So you gotta readjust a set point. And the only way to readjust a set point is to change what you eat. You have a hunger center in your hypothalamus, in the arcuate nucleus, for example, and you will eat exactly the amount of food that you currently eat if you try to just do it with exercise more and eat less. You can't change it. You might do it for a month or two or three, but then you're going to start binging again. That binge is coming, boy, in the form of cakes, pies, muffins, and ruffled potato chips. And go back to your fat ways. So I'm going to show you how to lose weight fast and keep it off. I've kept it off now. Gosh, that was like about 100 years ago, man. 17 years ago. All right. If you eat healthy, it, it's actually easy to do, but you got to eat healthy. All right. So what's the secret? The most important thing you could know to maintain a healthy body weight the rest of your life, eat starch. A starch is also called a complex carbohydrate. That means a plant food that has fiber in it and carbohydrates. And starch basically means a... I don't agree with some of this. 
I don't. I don't agree with it. Because when I eat fruit, boy, the shit falls off, man. But if it's only fruit, if I don't include starches. It's weird if you combine them, it doesn't seem to have the same effect. A polymer of glucose, okay? I mean, not at the same meal. I'll never combine them at the same meal. That shit is ridiculous. That's a good thing to remember. A polymer of glucose. Glucose is the good sugar, all right? The bad sugar is, is processed fructose, is the really bad sugar, all right? All right, but when, uh, also if you hear anybody saying carbs, that means they're, they're, they don't know what they're talking about. They're ignorant or they're stupid, okay? Never say carbs. Anybody who says the word carbs, that makes me cringe because it's totally ignorant. Fructose, industrial fructose makes you fat and sick, okay? Whereas starch makes you healthy. Simple sugars in small amounts, you know, sucrose is a combination of fructose. I don't agree at all. I don't agree at all. Whenever I have followed do, do the starch only, I have gotten fatter. Fructose and glucose. And fruits do have some fructose in them where they come packaged with a little bit of fiber and at least some vitamin C and whatnot. But what I'm trying to say, saying carbs is like saying night day. My favorite time is night day. It's stupid, okay? So I don't even use that word. All right, so what are the starches? Rice. Look at people who eat a primarily rice-based diet. In China, when they used to eat, you know, about 80% rice-based diet, they're all skinny. Nowadays, they're eating meat and fast food and junk food. There's tons of fat Chinese people, okay? Beans, beans is all the blue zones. Look at Dan Butner, National Geographic. All the blue zone populations ate, I don't know, about a cup or more of beans every day. They, they really satisfy hunger with a few uh, calories. Why is starch so good, by the way? Because they satisfy hunger with the fewest number of calories. Their low caloric density, which stretches your stomach, provides early satiety, satisfaction of hunger. Then in the intestine, your intestine has to spend a lot of time peeling off the fiber before the glucose from the starch polymer of glucose um, that glucose is separated and can be absorbed from your gut to your blood. And it maintains a normal blood glucose a prolonged amount of time. You feel good. And you satisfy your hunger with the fewest number of calories. So you're skinnier. And um, you're less prone to diabetes, hypertension, all the bad stuff. All the healthiest people in the world. They and honestly, I can't eat as much fruit as I can eat starch. I can easily eat three, cup, three dry cups cooked rice in a i did it last night um but i can't much eat much more than um five or six uh bananas at a time they eat starch-based diets um rice is a good example you look at people in countries where they eat lots of rice skinny um all right anyways let's go to the next topic avoid meat meat is basically about 50 percent fat and about 50 percent uh animal protein they're both bad uh saturated fat makes you agree with them there Fat causes atherosclerosis, increases your risk of diabetes. Animal protein increases your risk of cancer once you get over 10% of the diet. You don't want that. The more you learn about meat, the proper reaction to meat is to be afraid of it. Again, up to about 35 years of age, 30 years, depending on your health, your genetics, your luck, you can get away with eating meat. But the older you get, man, it just pushes you down in terms of your health. <clears throat> um, no oils. Don't even have one drop. See, you don't want to be half-assed. If you're half-assed, you're going to have limited success and you're going to be sad. By the way, most people never lose the weight. I know tons of fat people and a lot of them are very nice. They never get skinny. They never do. The only ones who get skinny are the ones that say, that's it. I'm going to become 100% vegan. I'm going to do all this stuff, okay? And it really, you should have a determined effort because when you're fat, it means you're sick. It means you're screwed. You're, you're going to... Yeah to be hypertensive yeah. i mean they try to call you healthy and, and whatever but mm, no if you're probably going to be diabetic soon enough and you're going to die prematurely you're going to be around less to see your potential grandchildren and all that it's not that would be tricky good uh what else no sweets uh i recommend no liquid fructose especially if you drink your calories there's no fiber there you get rapid absorption i mean where did it go if you're blending up bananas, there's fiber. And it makes you fat. So don't be drinking anything sweet. The only thing you need to drink is water. I also recommend when you're in the early phase. Water with sugar in it. Early phase of weight loss to not eat any fruits, okay? I know that fruits are good if you're, if you're skinny and you're an athlete and you're running triathlons, you need more calories. Fine, eat more fruits. But I think fruits are nature's way of helping an animal get fat before it hibernates for the winter. Now, don't get me wrong. 
If you work out a lot, some people need more calories. The best way to get extra calories is eat more fruits, all right? But if you're trying to lose weight... I'm not even going to agree to disagree here. I'm just going to straight up disagree, all right? That is ridiculous. When I <laughs> lost 145 pounds eating bananas, watermelon, dates, some nuts here and there, some avocado, and salad. Sorry. I don't agree Wait, with all. fruits, just because of the fructose, even though it's packaged with the good stuff, the fiber and the vitamin C, it still has a tendency to make you fatter. It just does. Don't be drinking no. beer. Beer can have an estrogenic effect and make you fat. I agree there. It definitely has an estrogen. You can feel it. Fat. Um, avoid MSG. The reason I say that is MSG is a flavorant. It makes stuff taste good. And a lot of people are addicted to junk food because of MSG and other food additives. So you want to avoid that. You actually, you got to go through your pantry and get anything out that is MSG. Usually it's not going to say MSG. It's going to say something like barley malt extract, malt extract, protein extract, isolated protein, all that kind of stuff. It's got MSG's got more names than anything. All right, sleep. You got to get your sleep because if you don't sleep, your body perceives that as stress and perceiving it as stress, your cortisol goes up, which tends to make you fat. In addition, you tend to crave sweets. I think that's nature's way of us previously having craved. Of course you crave sweets. Your body lives on sugar. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. Mm. If I did not lose a hundred and probably, I probably most, of, if not all of my weight on fruit, I, I don't, I, I am. Mm, mm. I mean, I went from 260 to 292 doing the star solution. Fruits, but the bottom line is mm. you will get fatter if you're not. And I was strict as hell too, like it, to, to the point of annoying me. Sleeping well, that's when I got fat. Um, no caffeine. I recommend avoiding it because what is caffeine? Caffeine basically mimics acute stress. It elevates cortisol. It decreases your sleep. Even if you sleep the same number of hours on caffeine, you don't sleep as deeply. We talked about how to uh, quit caffeine in some of my other videos. Um, get all the meat, oil, processed food out of your house. It should not be in your house. Um, if it's in your house, you're going to be prone to binge or eat it. You know, Talk to your family member, your spouse, whatever. Okay. All right. Uh, almost made it on this one. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of what he says, but the fruit thing, I don't agree at all. I don't agree at all. Uh, only because I know a lot of people who have lost a lot, a lot of weight. I mean, Arnold's place alone, like Arnold and Arnold's way, I, that alone, I, he's got hundreds, if not more, of people that have lost so much weight doing uh, fruit. I, I don't agree at not even 1% here. Not even 1% agree. Nope. Nope. Not at all. But some of the other stuff I agree with, um, I'm actually having a hard time getting over the fruit thing. I really am. Now, hopefully he sees this and I do an interview so I can yell at him a little bit. But um, anyway, anyway, um, it's Valentine's Day. So hopefully those of you who have Valentine's uh, have a good day and like, comment, questions, all that good stuff down below. Um, tomorrow, if you're seeing, if you saw this whole thing tomorrow, what is it, the 15th? I'm going to be doing an interview with Nutrition by Victoria. If you have any questions for her, leave it down below. I'm also going to post a comment on my, or a post on my YouTube, um, so you can put, put them there. Anyway, talk to you next time.